Welcome again to Side by Side, which is recorded for the 14th of January. Almost halfway through the month of January, isn't it encouraging in the sense that we're moving into springtime? I was noticing some seeds that Joan had planted in her little propagator, and they're peeping their little heads up now through little parsley seeds. And it's always encouraging, isn't it, to see these little signs of hope. And it's something that we all need, isn't it? Hope every day. And it's like a light that leads us on as we talk about light at the end of the tunnel. Well, those who know the Lord know that there's not only light at the end of the tunnel, but they know there's light in the tunnel and all the way through. The Lord is our light and our salvation, isn't he? But today we're going to listen to the words of Proverbs chapter 1, verses 20 down to verse 33. I'm not going to read them all. I leave that for you to do. As we finish, you might want to read over again and slowly think through these words. But let me take you into this. I think here in these words, we can hear the very words of Jesus as he speaks and teaches. The Gospels give us ample example of his teaching, which accords entirely with what we are seeing here. Wisdom calls aloud in the street. She raises her voice in the public squares. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out, And in the gateways of the city, she makes her speech. That's the declaration, wisdom. That's the words of the Lord, the word of the Lord Jesus. Now, if you were to contrast that with what we see and hear today of life and humanity when they face their problems and their crisis, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but I get the feeling that most people, and certainly the general sort of official view is we know better, we know best, we don't need help from outside. Surely science is the saviour, economics are the saviour, or whatever else it may be, but we don't need help from outside. And yet this conveniently ignores that people make the problems in the first place. They're the ones who cause and spread the problems, disasters and diseases. And yet at the same time, it's, not, it's, it's important that we don't forget that many Christian, God-respecting, fearing people are in those communities too and contributing so helpfully in the scientific community, in the medical community, in the business community, in the political community. They're there by God's grace like Joseph and Daniel and all the others who in the Old Testament were strategic at times. But when we read of wisdom calling aloud in the street and raising her voice in the public square, we're talking about truth, aren't we? In the noisy streets, at the city gates, the voice of wisdom is heard right in the middle. It's not something that's, you know, in a periphery. It's there in the place of significance and importance. There's a sense of accessibility, isn't it? It's heard. It's loud. It's constant. There's a sense of urgency, and you could not fail to encounter it in these key and public places. It seems that the picture presented is much like our day. The offer is made, the counsel is given. Right now, God is speaking. And how does it happen that we tend to act so foolishly? Notice the manner of the people. You read it there. It calls them the simple love simple ways. The mockers delight in mockery, and the fools hate knowledge. There's a sort of a progress there. For the simple are those in the word there, the the people at the very beginning. That's how it begins. Later on, it goes a little bit, it firms down to the point of fools hate knowledge. That's a hardening to the place of cynicism and scoffing. Someone who thinks they know more and they know better. Well. The idea is here not only of truth, but surely of time. Because the word is spoken there, verse 22, it says, How long will you simple? How long will you mockers delight in mockery? So there's a sense of time, isn't there? Time has a beginning, it has a middle, and time has an end. Well, that's the way we sometimes say it. It might seem a little simple, but it's true. And it's very true in this chapter. God wisely calls and he continues to call for some time. People hear, but their response is not positive. 
it's foolish. And then eventually, time runs out. If you scan your eye down to verse 28, you read there, They will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me. And so there's a sense in which time has run full circle. It began, they were in the middle, and it comes to an end, that time. And so truth that is given, this wisdom, is given in a, t- in a period of time, and it leads to tragedy. Thirdly, there are a raft of examples of this truth in Scripture. Some stand out very powerfully above all the other examples, but we can go to uh, way back all the way to the life of Moses, and, and, and there uh, you see him working with Pharaoh, leading on into the, to, to the situation in Exodus where the wisdom that is given to Pharaoh is rejected entirely until Pharaoh foolishly hardens his heart and rejects the whole thing, and ultimately he is rejected. The same is true of someone like King Saul. King Saul, who's the first king of Israel, who has given so much wisdom, sent to him by Samuel. Just as Pharaoh was given Moses to give him wisdom, sorry, Pharaoh was given Moses, so Saul is given Samuel. And Samuel speaks truth into his life, speaks God's wise words into his life, which he rejects. And he eventually becomes a, a hardened, cynical person. And what happens? He loses his life in a foolish battle. And then you've got someone like Nabal, maybe not in the high-profile positions of Pharaoh or Saul, but nonetheless a man who seems to have had a significance. He's, he's a businessman. He's a, he's a man who, well, his wife calls him a fool, a foolish businessman. And in his life, he rejects David, the king, who will be king, and he mocks him and he belittles him. But Nabal is the man who dies. He dies, his heart becomes, it says, like a stone. God judges him. You see how there's tragedy in the end. God having sent wise counsel that would not be taken seriously, they thought they knew better. And while we read here in verse 26 that God laughs, it's not as though he's saying, I told you so in a human laughter the way people might do, but it's a sense in God's affirming right over wrong. Ray Ortland ref- reflects on C.S. Lewis's comment that he said, there are only two kinds of people in the world, those who say to God, thy will be done, and those to whom God says, yes, thy will be done, have it your own way then. And I wonder, has it ever occurred to us that no one really ever gets away with their folly and rejection of God's wisdom? If for a time it seems as if they do, and even as we look around today, and we see the voices of defiance and rejection, we think, ah, you know, they seem to be succeeding. But the psalmist says, that's the way I was thinking in Psalm 73. And then he said, but when I went into the temple, then I understood their end. This little section of Proverbs says, they destroy themselves. They often end up lonely, forgotten, and sad. It is true, isn't it? Those words there. They will eat, verse 31 says, the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. That is really the truth. We have lived long enough and we can see enough history to tell us that that is exactly the way it is. There's such a clear echo of these verses in Jesus' parable of the two builders, one on the rock and one on the sand. The one who built their life on the words of Jesus and what what he said and the other who didn't choices they made. It's still not too late, you know. If you're hearing this, it's possible to seriously consider, if you've not done so, to seriously consider the wisdom of God and his word. And it's also, it's also timely for us to seriously pray for those we know who are somewhere still in the middle. And that's because verse 33 ends with that great verse of hope. Whoever listens to me will live in safety. Whoever. Well, isn't it great to know that there is a a hope for the whoever? And I just leave that with you and I today, that we'll pray for the whoever, and we'll also think about it, because we're also surely the whoever. So let's listen to the wisdom that we hear in God's word, and let's respond with hope and thanks. 
and God bless you today.